Today, we're going to make a gravity-powered car. That's right, you heard it, powered by gravity. We have a new challenge here. We found a little project that has a plenty of room for improvement. It's a great idea for a school competition since everyone can build it differently and see who goes the farthest. Just like those polyethylene terephthalate bottle rockets. The concept behind our car is simple. There's a car and a weight. As the weight drops, it pulls the car. Think of a rock and a car. Ours will be a bit different though. We need the rock to drop inside the car. So I'm starting with the simplest version. Basic, bare bones. Then we'll try to upgrade it. I'll build the chassis just with kite sticks and bamboo skewers. They're not perfectly straight, but that's fine. What must be straight are the axles. One must be parallel to the other. So I'm using a ruler and two sets of squares to glue it perfectly aligned. I'm using super glue with a bit of QFS, which is a glue accelerator. The structure isn't very rigid, but this should help stiffen it up. We reuse the wheels from an old robot project. You can also use wheels from another toy car. What's great is that these ready-made wheels are already well aligned and precise. I just wrapped some tape around the skewer stick so the wheel fits perfectly. Check it out. We have the car, now we just need gravity. Since the weight is going to drop, I need to build some kind of tower up here. I plan to build two tall triangles using the longest bamboo sticks I have. I'll mount a pulley at the top. I need to remove the steel part from this clothesline reel before I use it. It's not easy. I'll use a vise for that, but after it's out, the rest is simple. I'll cut two small pieces of popsicle sticks to work as stoppers, so the pulley doesn't shift side to side. I'll place them on this skewer stick and mount it on top of the two triangles. Now think of something really crooked. I'm going to hang the rock to see how far off center it drops. The wheel is very off center. It looks bad, but it likely won't affect how it works. Everything seems to be in place. I'll make a kind of cradle so that when the rock finishes dropping, it lands in a nice little nest. Also, I'll reinforce the axle that drives the car to give it more traction. You'll soon see why, but I'm cutting two pieces of paper. For the first time, I'm using hot glue, which I avoided earlier, to keep the car light. But I need more volume now. Finally, let's attach the weight to the wheel. I need to remove the middle section of the straw. I didn't do this before to ensure perfect alignment during assembly, but it's easy to do. Then I'll make a small hole in the axle and insert a tiny wire, securing it with super glue. This wire will hold the end of the string. Now here's the trick. How do we wind it up? To power this little car, there's a loop at the end of the string tied to the rock. This loop attaches to the wire I added, and then we start turning the wheel. As I turn the wheel, the rock rises. It's storing gravitational potential energy. I'm storing energy inside this rock. As you may have guessed, once it's fully wound, the rock is up and the string is wrapped around the axle. When I let go of the rock, watch, it has to detach at the end. The string must come off. And it did. If the string gets stuck at the end, it stops the card. If it detaches, the card keeps going. It picks up speed and keeps moving, in theory anyway. We haven't tested it on the ground yet to see if the stone's force is really enough to pull the cart. That's easy to fix. Just use a heavier rock. It'll move anything. Well, not exactly. The cart has to carry the rock's weight too. So the heavier the rock, the more weight the cart has to haul along with it. That's something we can tweak easily, and in a cart competition it could make a difference. Shall we test this beauty? One, two, three, and... I'm swapping the rock for this weight from the comparison scale. It weighs 200 grams. Just so you know, the rock weighed 42. I'm almost multiplying the weight by eight. One, two, three, and... Go, 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 go. I think the problem is that the axle is too small. It's like trying to start a car in fifth gear. The car doesn't have enough torque. You're asking it to go too fast right away. Look, with each little turn the string makes on the axle here, this wheel makes one full rotation. One full rotation is too much for a short pull. I have two solutions for that. The options are making the wheel smaller or the axle bigger. I'm not sure which one is harder. Let's try wrapping tape around the axle to increase its diameter. This way we make it larger without changing anything else. It may not look like much, but I'm more than doubling the axle's diameter. 
which means the force more than doubles, but the card also loses about half its speed. I think it's stronger now, you know? The card's frame is kind of, well, wobbly, but I think it'll work this time. And this change is like shifting into a lower gear. It's like putting it in third gear to get moving. And not perfect, but I think that... Uh... Let's go, my friend. We have a gravity-powered little car. It moved, and that already means something. Let's measure how far. Three meters and 80 centimeters. I still think we need to go one gear lower. Uh, I'm going to increase the axle just a bit more, as much as the Y length allows. Now it's like we're starting in second gear, or maybe even in first, which is the right move, right? Look, it's already trying to go here on the table. This is going to be great. One, two, three, and... Without the weight, it might have gone even farther. 360? I just had a bad idea. What if halfway through the cart dropped the weight? As soon as the weight finishes powering the wheel, it drops off the cart. That way, there's less weight to carry. That could work if the weight didn't count as part of the cart's momentum or inertia. So it's useless to drop the weight if it's already moving at the same speed as the cart. That idea only works if we drop the weight right at the start. But since the cart had to push the full weight during acceleration, by the end, the weight is already fast. It actually helps the cart, it doesn't hold it back. Goal, 4 meters. I changed the length of the line. Let's see how it goes. It didn't go very far, but I think it hit the target. Actually, no. 3 meters and 70 centimeters. I'm going to try something bold now. I won't even tell you what it is yet. I'll share later if it works. One, two, three, and... Well, it didn't work, so you won't find out what I did. Our prototype is around 4 meters. If you're building one for a science fair, this design works. Since I barely used anything you wouldn't find at home. But honestly, for someone who's already built a submarine, 4 meters isn't much at all. It should go at least about 30 meters, right? So that's the new challenge. Let's switch gears to full power mode now. Let's design it so we can cut the parts with a laser. That's one of my favorite things to do. The challenge is to create a two-dimensional drawing that will actually assemble into a three-dimensional form. So you need to picture how all the parts will fit together, keeping in mind that everything will be made from 3mm medium-density fiberboard. The whole process of designing and cutting the parts took about three hours, and here's the result. I have no idea how many pieces there are, but I'm going to assemble them. I forced this part in and broke the ethylene vinyl acetate foam. Just what I needed at this moment. You know what's worse? We're almost out of medium density fiberboard. There's no piece big enough left to cut. Oh man. Let's go back to the cutting station. Time to start all over again, right? The cut's chassis is ready. This time without breaking. And here's the tower that will support... Well, I mean... It should support the cart's weight. I found another part that's the wrong size. Great. And it's already 5.20 in the afternoon. I need to finish by 6 so I can test it outside tomorrow morning. Look at this beautiful thing. It seems like it's going to work, doesn't it? The idea with this new version is to first make everything perfectly aligned that's something the laser ensures, since the pieces are cut by a computer. The second goal is to build a more robust structure. So I'm adding several braces and small frames to make sure the whole thing doesn't bend when we add weight. Because medium density fiberboard itself is kind of soft, like a ruler. You need triangular braces and some 90 degree angles to make sure it doesn't go all flimsy. Another key difference is that everything that spins now uses bearings. Up here on the top, we've also got a pulley with bearings. I'm gonna put a spacer on each side using this medium density fiberboard I cut earlier. Let's do a bit of an exaggerated test here. This little weight is one kilogram. Look. Oops. It fell onto the medium density fiberboard and broke it. 
Oops, it can handle the weight, you just can't drop it straight on the cart, right? The wheels will be made of ethylene vinyl acetate, but since that's a soft material, I added an outer layer made of medium density fiberboard. So it's like having an ethylene vinyl acetate tire with a medium density fiberboard wheel. The cool thing is that super glue works great on both materials. Both materials also cut well with the laser. In the end, the result is very sturdy. I'll use this small aluminum tube for the axles. It may seem rare, but here in Sao Paulo, we found it for less than three rays per meter. Super cheap. Now comes that moment when you get butterflies in your stomach, right? On this axle, I'm going to install something. Still a secret. I think it'll work well, but I'm not totally sure. We'll test it when the time comes. It's the same secret that failed before, but I still believe in it. Everything's going surprisingly well. We were thinking about what to put in the middle to support the weight. The weight kept bouncing on the cart and messing things up. We'll just place a cloth to cushion the impact. Simple as that. Do you think it'll move now? Ooh, at Manuel do Mundo, we don't have any stretches longer than five or six meters. So we went back to the Dragons da Real court. The whole court must be over 100 meters long, but we don't need that much. First, we'll mark 10 meters. I placed a small square every meter and a slightly bigger stripe every five meters. One, two, three, and... Oh my goodness, it's going. It won't stop now. At this rate, we don't even have a long enough tape measure. It must have gone about 20 meters. Let's check it. Hold on, let's see how far it went. So it was 20, right? 22 and a half meters on the first try. That's amazing. Let's add more distance markers. We had to create the marking system. Each white square represents 10 meters. And at 30 meters, there are three squares to avoid confusion. Now that it worked, I need to tell you the secret. Back here where the line winds up, I built it like a ratchet, like a bicycle cassette. I added several pulleys of different sizes so that while winding it, I can control when the cart shifts gears. If I use the aluminum gear, it's the heaviest and fastest, but it can't start in the highest gear right away. So I let these bigger pulleys wind up last, like starting a bike ride in a very light gear. You begin pedaling in a light gear and then shift to heavier ones as you build speed. That's exactly what I'm doing with the cart. As it gains speed, the wire lowers and unwinds over a smaller ratchet section. That likely gives it much more speed. My challenge now is to fine tune when it shifts gears. Does it need 10 turns in the light gear before moving to a heavier one? Can it shift gradually or in just one turn? Let's test it in a second run using heavier gears. One, two, three and... Fifteen meters. Go, 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 go. Twenty meters. It reached twenty-four meters before slowing down. Now I'll do the opposite and use a very light gear. One, two, three, and... It starts off stronger, with much more momentum from the beginning. But then I wonder if the line might release too early. That was ten meters. The heavy weight inside the cart gives it a lot of inertia, helping it push forward. Twenty. Around 22. Now the gear is fully heavy. It will start and end in the heavy one, like... Like starting a car in fifth gear. I won't use my ratchet trick. Not even sure it can get going. One, two, three, and... It manages. Starting in heavy gear is hard, but it's gaining momentum. I like the result. You passed 15. 20. Yeah, as expected, it's better to start in a light gear and end in a heavy one. So far, I've been testing with 200 grams. Now I'm adding 100 more, a 50% increase to see if it makes a difference. With real torque now, one, two, three, and... Wow, I think we picked up more speed, huh? It passed 20 with more power this time, Lucas. 25, we have a new record, 27 meters. Let's add more weight. We're going from 300 grams to half a kilogram. I'm not even sure the line will hold. Two big improvements from that little car to this one. 
First is sturdiness. You could never place half a kilo on the old one. And second, the weight goes higher. That means we store more energy, like having more fuel in the tank. So it definitely goes farther. One, two, three, a half. Half a kilogram is taking off. It gains much more speed, passing 10 easily. At 20, 25, it stopped. There's a little ramp here, look. It's rolling back. It couldn't make it past this ramp. It went slightly over 27. One, two, three, and... It's going to hit the small ramp again. Did it reach 30? No, it rolled back. It's not going to be easy to beat that 30 meter ramp. Let's really push it. One kilogram. I don't think this number 10 line will hold, so I'll use Aramid here, an ultra resistant fabric. Just so you know, it's used to armor vehicles. Now the cart structure is starting to give in. One kilogram is really heavy. Let's try to conquer that 30 meter climb. Wow, it really went. It flew past 20. Come on, come on, come on. It's gonna make it. Yes, 30 meters. 31, not just 30. Mission accomplished. But we want to go even farther. With the little cart's mission complete, it's time to go all out. Let's double the weight. I'm adding one more kilogram here. One, two, three, and there it goes. Wow, this thing is fast. <laughs> Lucas, we need to measure this. Get the tape measure. 35 meters. The little guy exceeded all expectations. Let's mark 40 over there. When designing this small card based on the old model, I made a mistake in one of the calculations. We cut wheels that were way too large. If I had used these wheels from the start, the cart wouldn't have moved at all. But now that it's performing so well, it's like we've added heavier gears. Let's switch this wheel then. Lucas, let's see how many seconds it takes Ibrate to do this pit stop. It's not that easy. This wheel wasn't made for it. Look, look, I might surprise you here. I already removed both rear wheels. 4.5 minutes, 4.5 minutes. That's pretty good, huh? Who would have thought it didn't even move in the first version? Let's go. Wow, 20 meters, 25, that tough 30, he cleared it, 35, he cleared it, 36, come on. Go! No! He didn't go beyond 36, nope. 2.7 kilograms, he's desperate to break free. The wheels aren't well aligned anymore, it's just too much weight. Let's see what happens. This is our final attempt. Wait, 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 I have a question. If this car works so well and gravity is free, why don't cars use gravity to move? Gravity isn't a source of energy. An object stores energy, gravitational potential energy, when you lift it, then it wants to fall. It's that descent that releases energy, but first it has to be lifted, which means you need to spend energy initially. In this case, I was the one lifting the weight, but in a car, you'd need electric power and a motor to do that. And there's something even worse. Imagine if we put a gravitational battery in this combi, it'd look like this. You'd have to place the weight way up there, a huge weight. Besides not fitting under bridges or inside garages, the car stability would be a disaster. If you tried turning with a gravitational battery, the massive top heavy load could flip the car. So while this idea might not suit cars, it's great for science fairs or university projects. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. 40, 40, 40, 40, and it hit! 40 meters, and it hit the wall. I think we've got a really awesome little car, huh? This is a fantastic project for school competitions. Let's see who can engineer the best design. This video is full of great tips. Similar cart that you can build at school is powered by a mousetrap. It uses elastic potential energy from the spring instead of gravitational energy. 